Um, first, I want to recognize that, that people are concerned about the situation. Uh, we hear from the public and, and from others about their concern, and, and we are worried as well. Uh, our concern has grown since yesterday in light of what we've learned since then. I want to acknowledge uh, the importance of uncertainty. At the early stages of an outbreak, there's much uncertainty and probably more than everyone would like. Our guidelines and advice are likely to be interim and fluid, um, subjects to change as we learn more. We're moving quickly to learn as much as possible and working with many local, state, and international partners to do so. I want to recognize that while we're moving fast, it's very likely that this will be more of a marathon than, than a sprint. Um, I want to acknowledge change. Um, our recommendations, advice, approaches will likely change as we learn more about the virus and we learn more about its transmission. I want to acknowledge that we're likely to see local approaches to controlling the spread of this virus, and that's important. That can be beneficial. Uh, that can teach us things that we want to use in other parts of the country and that other people uh, in other places may find useful. Because things are changing, because flu viruses are unpredictable, and because there will be local adaptations, it's likely that at any given moment there will be confusing or maybe confusing or conflicting information available. Um, we are very committed to minimizing that and where we find that uh, clearing up any of that uh, misconception. So on to today's update. The, the United States government is working with the World Health Organization and other international partners to assure early detection and warning and to respond as rapidly as possible to this threat in order to lessen its potential health and socioeconomic impact. We're committed to sharing any new information with our international partners and with the public as it becomes available. We do not know whether this swine flu virus or some other influenza virus will lead to the next pandemic. However, scientists around the world continue to monitor the virus and take its threat seriously. The government of the United States strongly supports the international health regulations, which establish a framework for effective international cooperation in monitoring, reporting, and responding to public health emergencies of international concern. So on, on to today's update of confirmed cases. Yesterday we reported we had confirmed a total of seven cases in the United States. Today we've confirmed one additional case in California, bringing the total number of U.S. confirmed cases to eight. The most recently confirmed case involved a child in the San Diego area who's recovered. Today, Mexico's Minister of Health confirmed that they have cases of swine influenza in people and that they believe some of the people who were infected died from swine influenza. While we are now working with health officials in Mexico, we're very early on in those efforts. We've only tested a very limited number of samples from Mexico, and we do not have enough information to fully assess the health threat posed by this swine flu virus. Uh, we've tested 14 samples from Mexico, and seven of those tested positive. We also only have eight confirmed cases in the United States, which makes it hard to draw conclusions about the full spectrum of the clinical picture. We need more comprehensive laboratory analyses and a better understanding of what's really going on with respect to the number of people who experienced influenza-like illness in Mexico. We still do not have enough information to give us any sense of the extent of spread of this virus, and the illness spectrum is not currently known. Uh, I want to go over some of the CDC and other public health uh, agency actions that have been taken. We're working very closely with state and local officials in California, Texas, as well as with health officials in Mexico, Canada, and the World Health Organization. CDC has sent teams to California and will be sending a team to Texas to assist state and local health officials in identifying people who are potentially infected. Contacting people who lived with or were in extended close contact with confirmed cases and helping on laboratory work. CDC expects to send people to Mexico to assist in the public health efforts there. Uh, in terms of our travel recommendations, at this time there are no recommendations for U.S. travelers to change, restrict, or alter their travel, travel plans to Texas, California, or Mexico. CDC will be issuing today an outbreak notice for American travelers to central Mexico and Mexico City. A CDC outbreak notice is designed to inform travelers of an increased health risk due to an outbreak in a limited geographic area.